what would happen, they wondered, if they fired a neutron at a uranium nucleus, already the heaviest in nature? Why not try? So they tried. And the result? Nuclear fission. Instead of a minor change, the atom split in two. Truly a discovery to change the world. Since neutrons were much better at firing at atomic nuclei than protons, a huge amount of research went into observing these collisions. In 1938, two German chemists, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, were performing an experiment where they bombarded uranium with neutrons, and they observed something strange. After the bombardment, they found that some of their sample had turned into barium. Now, the barium nucleus is significantly smaller than the uranium nucleus, so it seemed preposterous that it could have formed from normal alpha decay. Just a couple of months later, Austrian physicist Lisa Meitner and her nephew Otto Robert Frisch published the theoretical proof that Hahn and Strassmann had successfully split the uranium nucleus. Nuclear fission had been achieved. The process released a huge amount of energy, and it was quickly realized that it could be used for power plants or it could be used for weapons. Let's slow down that fission a million or so times. A single particle starts the reaction, splitting the uranium atom. Here now is the release of energy as heat and blast. Here are powerful rays being given off, similar to X-rays. But here, here are free neutrons driven out with tremendous speed and provided there is sufficient U-235 present, what science calls a critical mass, those neutrons bombard other uranium atoms, causing them to split and split still others. The result? A chain reaction. Over a million, billion, billion atoms exploding within two seconds. Shortly after the discovery of nuclear fission, Hitler invaded Poland and the Second World War began. Many of the German scientists who were leaders in the field of nuclear physics also happened to be Jewish, so they had been forced to flee their home country throughout the 1930s and many of them ended up in Britain. One of these refugees was Otto Robert Frisch. He ended up at the University of Birmingham and was later joined by another physicist by the name of Rudolf Pyles. In March 1940, the two published the frisch pyles Memorandum, where they described for the first time the feasibility of creating an atomic bomb. In their report, they said, We have no information that the same idea has also occurred to other scientists, but since all the theoretical data bearing on this problem are published, it is quite conceivable that Germany is in fact developing this weapon. If one works on the assumption that Germany is or will be in the possession of this weapon, it must be realized that no shelters are available that would be effective and that could be used on a large scale the most effective reply would be a counter-threat with a similar bomb. And so, two and a half thousand years of philosophical thought and scientific breakthroughs had inevitably led here, to an atomic arms race unlike anything the world had ever seen. In Britain, an atomic weapons development project codenamed Tube Alloys was established, with George Paget Thompson and James Chadwick as two of its founding members. Shortly afterwards, the United States began their own program, led by J. Robert Oppenheimer, which became known as the Manhattan Project. Progress in the United States eventually overtook Britain's, and in 1943, the two nations signed the Quebec Agreement, which allowed the Manhattan Project to subsume the tube alloys, so the two could share their research. Finally, at 5.29 a.m. on the 16th of July, 1945, the world's first ever atomic bomb was detonated in a test in New Mexico. The site of the test was the Jornada del Muerto Desert, a name given to it by Spanish conquistadors meaning dead man's journey. A perfect name considering the journey the atom has been on all these centuries, culminating in a potentially world-ending superweapon. Less than a month after the test, atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Ever since, humans have lived in a society under the continual threat of a possible nuclear attack. Perhaps this was simply an inevitability of scientific progress. Despite the bleakness of all this, what I find fascinating and even inspiring about this story is how it perfectly encapsulates how science works. Each model of the atom was the best answer to the evidence that was available at the time. When new evidence was discovered, the model had to change to keep up. 
science works because of its malleability. Yes, it brought us along an inevitable path into the atomic age, but maybe, just maybe, it'll be able to bring us back out again. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel, please consider liking and subscribing and please share the video with others who'll appreciate it. Make sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.